Hello, everyone. I'm back. My name is Corey Dowds. I have the VEDA. This will be part five of my Eclipse predictions videos for 2020. So check out the last four videos that I made. Um, and I will also recap some of that stuff because I haven't uh, done a video since this summer about the eclipses and or about any predictions for this year. So before I review, I will give some new predictions. So these are some of my new predictions for the eclipse that's coming up. There's going to be a lunar eclipse at the end of this month on the 29th to 30th, some around that, depending on where you're at on the planet. And that will be a lunar eclipse. And that's going to be actually visible in South America. So we're going to expect a lot more um, surprise events in South America and in the Americas in general. North America is going to be getting really triggered by this event. And of course, we just had an election in the United States and there's a lot of chaos and a lot of um, instability. <clears throat> now, um, for, the, for what I'm predicting, okay, so like I said in the last video back that I made about the total breakdown of the law, and, I, and in the video before that, I predicted how we were going to have a lot of violence and, and um, dangerous situations in New York City and in other cities because Gemini is the sign that rules cities and Gemini is where the eclipse is happening. So yeah, I'm expecting, unfortunately, there's going to be definitely more rioting and social unrest in, uh, in cities coming up this, for the rest of the year in 2020 and possibly parts of early 2021 there will likely be lots of deaths due to gun violence in these cities and throughout the United States because Sagittarius is the sign of guns and weapons. It's literally the sign of an archer. A bow and arrow is like the old version of a gun. So the modern day version of Sagittarius is a gun and the eclipse is happening there. K2 is there and Rahu is in Gemini. So yeah, be careful around cities, you guys, um, coming up. There does look like there's gonna be a lot more gun violence coming up. Um, now, I predicted that in the first video before we even had all those riots where we had like nine people shot in an eight hour stretch or whatever, I forget the details, go back and watch that video. Um, but Gemini rules the northeastern direction. So there's going to be a lot of uh, chaos going on in the northeast part of the country and then also in the southwest part of the country because Sagittarius rules the southwest. Sagittarius rules kind of like those dry, wide open areas, basically like Southern California and parts of, you know, not quite desert, but areas that are dry and almost like a desert. I told you guys watch out for fire and wildfires back in spring and that was before the entire southwest got lit on fire you guys so um kind of surprised nobody noticed that or, or made a comment <laughs> but go figure but yeah so you know you can go back and watch previous videos i was literally telling you guys there's gonna be danger from fire because we're gonna have mars and aries and we're gonna have k2 and sag um and then the sun is gonna be in leo and there's gonna be a grand trine and fire in august August is when we did have a lot of the, the, the really bad wildfires. Um, so that, that's a whole scene. Um, it's really unfortunate. Um, if you look here, I can show you guys a, an article about um, here. Yeah, the, uh, the Mojave Desert Fire back in August, you know, when, all, when the sun was in Leo and we had a grand trine of fire, so much fire unless there are other plants in leo as well back in august that desert fire destroyed the heart of a beloved joshua tree forest it's also fascinating because k2 rules like uh spiritual environments and sacred places as well so like i said in the um, previous video k2 rules churches and places of cultural importance and uh i told you guys how there would be danger to those areas and look, this Joshua tree is actually a place that's of great cultural importance and it got destroyed. Also, there's been a ton of uh, Christian churches like just getting burnt down and getting on fire and stuff throughout the, the year, but it's not been covered that much. And then also, um, and I said that that was before we had a string of people, um, you know, of, of the riots in different cities where they took down all these old statues of people who had slaves or this or that. So those, all those places like those statues 
um, in where I live in Marion Square, there was like this big deal to like have some statue taken down. Honestly, I thought that was kind of sure it's okay, but it seemed like almost like a could have used that energy in a lot more productive, health healthier ways. But that's just me. Um, and yeah, so they took down some of those statues and that was again, like K2, uh, you know, eclipsing some of these places of cultural importance from the past. So it's really interesting how that, how that played out. Um, so you guys, I'm expecting, um, yeah, we're, you know, just more danger due to fire because of all that fire sign activity when the planets get into the, when the sun enters into Sag like tomorrow, and then when there's more plants entering into Sag, we could expect even more violence, gun violence, um, and wildfires. I talked a lot about how social media, there's going to be major changes to social media into the internet tech landscape. I showed you guys that Facebook post, I could pull it up again, or just please go back and watch those previous videos so that you understand what I'm talking about. But basically, um, you know, that I, pr I predicted that there would be major changes to social media before Trump even threatened to break up social media. And then since then, now we've literally had, you know, I've been watching uh, court hearings where we literally have like Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey, that hip dude with the idiot hipster beard, uh, um, he's, he's, uh, trying to defend himself and just being owned, just being made a complete fool in front of the whole nation. And so, yeah, they're like, all these tech companies are actually getting pressure put on them. And thank God, dude, like that is not just a conservative thing. I mean, these social media companies are ruining people's lives. They're literally ruining people's careers just if they disagree with them. Um, I, when Google changed these search algorithms, my website, my blog I used to write a lot of art, awesome articles. I don't write them anymore because Google suppresses my website. I used to get over 300 hits a day. Like 300 was minimum. Um, if you typed in Navamsha chart, Atma Karka, anything like that into Google before 2019, you would have found my website in the first 10 results. I'd written so many great articles about these things, about Germany, about all this stuff. Now, ever since 2019, January, 2019, I get 10 hits a day, maybe, if I'm lucky. 13 is like, great. That's ridiculous. Going from 300 to 13 hits a day. And everyone else, you can talk to anyone in like the, the fringe world. I don't want to say the C word because I'll get suppressed, literally. Even certain words I say here on this YouTube channel, my videos will get just dropped and get basically shadow banned. Um, so it's like, I have to be careful what I even say that's absurd. So I don't care. Like I've always been an extremely liberal person, but honestly the events of this year have made me feel a lot more conservative and made me feel a lot like the, actually the left and the democratic party is the totalitarian party. Now they actually are the party that is suppressing free speech more than the other side. I don't, I don't care what yet. You can comment and say whatever you want, but that's just, it's pretty obvious right now that that's happening. Like you don't have to like Trump or any of that stuff, but just let people say what they say. You know what I mean? Like if a person's an idiot, just don't follow them, you know, but don't suppress them and like literally ban them from participating in these things that are now like kind of utilities. You kind of have to have YouTube, you have to have Facebook and these things. So um, I am myself, someone who's been victimized. Astrology itself is actually categorized in the fake news blanket that they say is all harmful and that anything you any content you consume from these fringe channels is danger to society i mean what the heck what the heck so i can't even say profanity or they'll you know suppress that so what the heck you guys like we as a people have to stand up and do something about this i just signed up to another um like a alternative to Twitter website. I'm not even going to say what it is because again, I'll get suppressed, but look for me on there. If you have that, I just signed up for today because I'm so tired of the way that all this stuff is being suppressed. Um, so the tech tech tyrants have to go like they just have to go. And this is what that uh, changing of the guard I was talking about in the beginning with social media, with, with Saturn. And this is what's fascinating is one prediction where I was really wrong. I was expecting that, when Saturn moved through Capricorn, we would get major changes to like all these systems that we all have to use now that have come up, but more democratic, like a more democratic version of YouTube, a more equal version of Facebook, a more equal version of Twitter, where they don't 
you know, hide certain things that are trending intentionally. Um, even a more equal version of PayPal or Venmo and all these things. Um, and I was wrong. That hasn't happened in the last two and a half years. I was super bummed. I expected that to happen. It didn't. Here's what I think it is. I think that it's actually now going to happen in the next two and a half year window of Saturn moving into Aquarius. So Saturn and Jupiter are about to move into tropical Aquarius. This is going to be, this is going to create major changes in currency as well. Um, and, you know, if you follow me on Facebook, you know, I've been predicting a lot of stuff about Bitcoin. I myself have made myself a lot of money with Bitcoin recently. If you're into that, email me. We'll set up a reading for some financial advice. But uh, yeah, there's going to be major changes. Bitcoin, the cryptocurrencies are going to are going to wax and increase. Um, the world economy is actually going to be unstable. And I really don't know enough to say any more than that. But there's going to be ups and downs. And we're already hearing about all this talk of the Great Reset and all this stuff. Um, at the same time as the New York Times said that that was a conspiracy theory, the World Economic Forum was literally celebrating the Great Reset, the Great Economic Reset on the exact same day. So it seems like not even everybody's on the same page about that in the media. But that's definitely... Uh, okay, so to dial it back, let me make sure this thought is clear. We're going to have more positive changes to social media and the internet in general and more positive societal changes in general in the next two and a half years with Saturn moving through Aquarius. And we're actually going to experience these things sooner in the more early part. So actually spring of like late winter, 2021, February, March, spring of 2021 is going to be a very intense, interesting time. There will be a lot of social unrest, but it will lead to something good, I think. And the next eclipse that comes up next June is going to be a positive one, where we finally get some great solutions and we make progress with a lot of these areas. The eclipse will be in Gemini. Gemini is the sign of internet and social media and how we get our information and how we communicate. So all these things are we're seeing how toxic these things have all become. Jim and I rules Facebook and Twitter and all these things. So Rahu shows where we need to detox, where we need to work on it a little bit. And so the, the, the last eclipse was the thing that made us all aware of it. Like, holy crap, people are, you know what I mean? Like, um, even the president was like going to threaten to break up these monopolies. And he did. And he started and he... Uh, I can't remember if he actually did sign an executive order at the moment. But anyways, he did things where we got these tech companies are in court. And that's actually a good thing, in my opinion. I don't care who, who decides to do that. That's a really good thing that needed to be done. Um, and because they were, like, banning Trump himself. Like, Twitter would, you know, interrupt the president. Or, you know, that's insane. Like, no, one, no time in the past has the president ever given a, given a talk, an address to the nation, and the news broke it and cut it out and went and, oh, CNN said, oh, I just want to interject and say that what he's saying is fake. That's kind of insane. Um, they never would have done, dreamed of doing that to Obama or any other president. So we see how biased the media is right now. Whether we like it or not, that's not healthy. That's not good. Um, so it's only a matter of time before the thing that we like gets suppressed, if, even if it's not right now. So we need to all be against that, honestly. Um, so that's one of the main predictions that I have to make. And... Um, we are going to get new, we're either going to see Facebook get broken up or we're going to see these things like the old oil monopolies get broken up or we're going to see new ones uh, allowed to kind of rise to the top. Um, the second one, the second big prediction is, uh, is yeah, like this eclipse is going to be affecting the world economy. Is this, uh, if in this, in my classic book here, which I highly recommend for Eclipse Studiers, Predictive Astrology by Bernadette Brady. Um, she goes into the sorrow cycle of the eclipses, which is this ancient, the Babylonians tracked eclipses for an amount of time that we don't even believe to have been possible, like so many thousands of years. Um, but they came up with, they figured out these sorrow cycles. Each eclipse is part of a set of eclipses that starts at the North Pole or the South Pole and slowly moves up and down. And the last eclipse, yeah, let's, let's just backtrack for a second. The last eclipse 
I told you guys back in June, June 2020, I told you guys restriction, inhibition, restraint, separation, and illusions are trademark of this family of eclipse. Illusions. Well, a lot of that stuff, a lot of the media, a lot of the stuff that they try to get you worked up to go riot about or to be upset about was fake and was not real. And I can't even talk about a lot of that, to be honest with you guys, because I would probably get banned if I really talked about, about it. So I just won't. Um, you can email me if you want to know more about it, or I'll have to wait till I can create my own platform where I can really speak what I really want to say. Um, but yeah, so I was restrained. I was restricted from being able to speak what I really wanted to speak. Many, many other people were. Um, of course, black people felt very restricted, very inhibited during the summer with the way the news was doing things. And I mean, honestly, the news was manipulating us all for fear and anger and get more clicks. Like, I don't even want to go into all that, but, but it's really obvious how much they were doing that to those who have a discerning eye. Sense of restraint. Well, the lockdowns continued and for really no reason. You know what I mean? We found that the, that the states and countries and places that didn't do a lockdown were fine. We're just as equipped as, as same as us. So it didn't even help. And yet we let our government lock us down and restriction. We were inhibited. You know, we were separated, separation from loved ones, um, separated from travel, separated from trade, um, all these sorts of things. And in the sense of being blocked, the individual is very prone to misjudge their strengths or the situation and is best advised to wait. So that's why I was telling people, you guys, this isn't really the right time to go out and riot. Um, I mean, I'm not like, I understand it. I understand why there was a need for that, but I was just trying to tell people, try not to get manipulated. You know what I mean? Um, it's really tricky with these things like BLM, you know, it's like you just make something that is so obviously like, of course, Black Lives Matter that anyone who tries to even remotely question it or the entire movement is like, what? You're acting like you don't think Black Lives Matter. It's like, whoa, no. And this is how fascist movements get started. Like Antifa, like, you know, just calling someone fascist, it's just really easy to basically like call anything you don't like fascist. And, you know, that's, if you look through history, that's been done. And it's been done by agent provocateurs who are trying to destabilize uh, a, a state or a nation. And so, yeah, I think that the elite, like I've said before, the elite know all about this eclipse stuff way more than you guys do. You know, this has actually always been their religion for, for hundreds and hundreds of years since Babylonian times. Um, and these elite use these periods to try to manipulate us more. Um, because during the eclipse periods, you're more likely to invite what we call a negative greeting, or uh, you're, you're more likely to get triggered by your notes um, accidentally by just allowing it, permitting it. Um, and yeah, I don't want to go into that like too, too much. Um, but yeah, this is a time when we need to really be careful, like who we are, um, you know, who we're how we're reacting to the world events. Okay, let's put it that way. So, yeah, so that eclipse was very difficult and it was better to wait um, and not be too reactionary. This eclipse I'm going to read now is coming up for us now at the end of the month on the 30th and then in December, uh, around like the middle of December. Um, this is a SS4 South. Um, so this series of eclipses carries with it a very strong, like emotion, very strong emotional feelings concerning relationships and or money. So this eclipse is targeting the world economy and there's going to be, it's kind of bad for the economy. This is bad for the world economy. Okay. Um, this eclipse is going to be bad for the world economy. Um, but then we will find solutions to it by next spring. Okay, so it's not like permanently bad. And there's going to be, like I said, when Jupiter and Saturn move into Aquarius, major changes in currency are going to happen. Aquarius is a fixed air sign. And air is a social interaction, trade, and currency. And at Libra, it changes, but in Aquarius, it's fixed. So we're going to have major fixed changes to our 
currency and units of exchange. <laughs> Buy crypto. <laughs> Not financial advice. Um, okay, so uh, there is a, uh, yeah, strong feelings around relationships and our money. With relationships, it could be a lot of these political events causing people to like change, uh, you know, break, break off relationships. Um, there could be anger or lust. Well, that's kind of vague, but yeah, um, that could be surrounding the situation. There's a sense of fatedness and individuals may find themselves caught up in relationship events, which are beyond their control. There could also be the sudden desire to finish a relationship. These emotions may be blocked or checked in some way, leading to a great deal of frustration. The best approach to this eclipse is to avoid rash action until the issues settle down. So again, this is another eclipse that's like, easy to get triggered, easy to get be really reactionary, but we need to be careful. And so this is an eclipse that's very likely to get more riots to happen. You see, to get more people rioting in the streets and get up people worked up. And this kind of concerns me. So that's why I wanted to talk about this. Yeah, so, so yeah, this, this coming up eclipse does kind of concern me for the United States. Like I said, it's, this is actually targeting the U.S. Like in the past, I said, oh, this is affecting Asia more. This eclipse is affecting the U.S. Um, we have this great big Saturn and Jupiter conjunction about to happen. The last eclipse, we had a lot of riots. And it was in, like I said, a lot of gun violence. We're having them in the same signs and everything. And now Mars is even stronger. So that kind of concerns me. So honestly, I think the craziest parts of 2020 maybe still haven't even been experienced yet, depending on what's coming up here. And I truly don't know what's coming up, but it looks very, very interesting. Now we can talk about some more of the political spectrum of things. Um, let's talk about the the election stuff, all right? So a lot of people in the insider world, see that's the thing is the media has said Biden won, but legally there is no outcome of this election yet. No one has legally determined the outcome of the election yet. At any point, the courts could overturn this for Trump. And, there, and astrologically, Think about how crazy it is, all this claims of election fraud. How Think about how crazy it is that the moon was in Gemini with Rahu on the day that the voting happened. That really does imply election fraud, if you ask me. That honestly really does like seem to, and K2 in the ninth means like trusting our culture to just, oh, we must have done it right. I'm sure we all count it right. K2 there is like, no, maybe don't. Rahu and Gemini is like, yeah, get into the details and maybe do the numbers again, maybe recount it again and see what happened. Um, Gemini is also the sign of cheating. It's the sign of not being ethical. Sag is the sign of being ethical. Gemini is the opposite of that. Gem Sag is the sign of like doing things the right way for a whole society to work out well. Gemini is a sign of playing the game of life so that you win no matter what. It's like great for gambling. You know what I mean? Um, so this election could get overturned at any point and the media is getting everybody real happy and worked out. Oh, so much healing is happening now. We have Biden now. We have a black female president, a vice president or and all that. And that's great. And I'm so happy, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it just, there's a sense of falseness to it. If you ask me, I don't know if it's false because I just know that know of all the corruption behind the scenes or if it's just false because it's about to be overturned. I don't know. But uh, I read somewhere in the news that there was like a 45 day time from the day of the election to when these legal things have to be resolved in the courts. And 45 days from the 3rd of November would be basically right around within days of the eclipse. Like it's like the 17th or something like that, or December. And so that's very unsettling because that means that right in time for this Saturn Jupiter conjunction for this eclipse in the sign of culture and government sad you know right around that time we're going to have basically we might have the election overturned or something or we might have something and so the media is going to basically even if trump really did deserve it because honestly it seems like he probably did really truly win the election because just looking at the numbers like okay no one has ever won florida and ohio in a, in a history of an election and not won the presidency um and then biden 
not a single person came to his rallies or even like watched his like interviews or live streams and things. And yet he somehow got more votes than any president in the history of voting in the country, like all time ever. I don't know. You know, it just seems like knowing what I know in astrology, it does seem like that. And if the Democratic Party was truly ethical, we wouldn't even have Biden. We would have Bernie, right, as our candidate, because that's what the Democratic Party really wanted. So we know that they're crooked. And a lot of people, yeah, anyway, so we really don't know what's going on. But it looks like 45 days after the election is lining up with some really, really big astrological events. So that's all I can say. Now, here's the thing, though, is either way, half the country is really upset right now. And so this is not good. So either way, like riotings and civil war could happen, you know? And so a lot of people in the insider world have been saying like, yeah, it looks like the elite in general, it looks like the elite really can't seem to control the world as easily with the United States the way it is. And they want to slowly shift the power of the world over to China. You know, like right now, the United States is like the Rome of modern times. We're like the king nation. If China were to have all that power and shift, the whole world would start to be different and would be more global and globalism and more easy to control and individual rights would get suppressed. So a lot of people think that the, uh, these, you know, one percenter elite top figure people have been wanting to for some time shift control out of the U.S. and into China because it's easier to run the masses. It's easier to control 8 billion people on the planet through a communist type of government, basically. And um, so a lot of people feel that for some time, the elite have been trying to tank the U.S. economy and they're trying to create civil war. And in all these ways, they're trying to rip it apart because that the it's not helping for them, helping them right now. So if that was the case, you don't have to believe that or not. But if that was the case, it would make a lot of sense if even the elite would want the results to get overturned and Trump to get back in office so that then the all these people who were just rioting, the media already gave them permission to riot, already said it's okay to riot. Hey, there's a coup happening and Trump's a fascist and he's taking back country. Let's all go riot. So you see, now they would have us all provoked and everyone would be going crazy and there would be a civil war going on in the country. A lot of people have been thinking about this from a lot of angles and hopefully we're all smart enough to not react and be manipulated this way. Hopefully not. And this is why I wanted to speak about this stuff. So even just a small audience that I have hears these ideas and perhaps shares them and contemplates them and perhaps with some meditation and prayer, the best possible solutions can come about. Um, but yeah, so that's basically uh, what I'm predicting is I'm not full out predicting civil war, but even back in the spring, I was like, yeah, we really could have events like war. I don't want to say war, but something very close to that. And yeah, it's not made me feel any different. The, the current events that have happened have not made me feel any different. Um, and alongside with that, we are going to see major changes to social media and the internet landscape, probably not at the end of the year, but probably starting next year with 2021. Um, that the internet landscape is going to become more fair again. It's going to become more equal, a more democratic playing field for all people to be able to, you know, interact and not have like, when you type in astrology, you get these big pop culture articles and not a real astrologer like, like you or I, um, and one of their articles. Um, and so hopefully Saturn and Jupiter will be able to get that done in Aquarius. And then of course, Aquarius is a sign of like, water and clean water and making life more bearable for everyone. So we're going to have more clean water and more food and more like more uh, focus on hopefully if there is whatever this great reset is, hopefully there will be, um, you know, it won't be to, you know, it'll be something where we can get more clean water projects going and um, water purification, all these things will become more mainstream. Um, and then like I was also saying, you know, cryptocurrency is going to be, uh, come more legitimate. Um, and then I just saw the other day, like even PayPal is trying to make a, a, its own cryptocurrency now. So that's definitely going to happen. Um, all right, you guys, this is probably enough for now. I'll make another video reviewing some of the previous predictions and stuff when I get time. All right. Hope you guys uh, enjoy that. Let's all pray for the highest good of the world and the country at this time. It's a very important time. So.